what I've got here today is the new Eco Series line of motors from Emacs and the Foxier T Rex camera and this frame, which I'll tell you a little bit about. And I and I talked to the engineers to try and figure out how on earth they are selling these for the price that they are. Let's actually put this quad down and I'll take out the 2807, which is a bit easier to see on camera. And so the main differences between these Eco Series motors and any other motor on the market or most other motors on the market is aside from some of the components being manufactured more efficiently, the main differences you're going to find in actual actual like in your hand physical differences are going to be the shaft it's titanium sorry it's steel instead of titanium which will pretty much just give you about a 1.7 1.8 gram handicap just because titanium weighs less but overall it functions exactly the same and it's it's actually stronger than titanium but it it doesn't really matter because I, I haven't heard anybody really having a problem with titanium shafts to begin with and I would argue that the bearings that are in this thing probably aren't the best on the market. But that honestly doesn't matter to me. I've had bearings on expensive motors go crunchy, and I've had bearings on cheap motors go crunchy, and they all still last the entire life of the quad. I've had crunchy bearings last over a thousand packs with no problem, and so it's up to you whether you think bearings matter or not. They really don't make that big of a difference to me. I'm sure people will find something to complain about, but I personally don't foresee a problem with the bearings that they're putting in these budget motors. And as I'm trying to point out, the fact that they're budget motors doesn't necessarily mean that they're cheap. Because most motors these days, functionally at least, are carbon copies of one another. So looking at the motor itself, it's got multi-stranded windings just because multi-stranded windings are more cost effective. They don't perform any differently. They perform arguably better in to some people and worse to others uh, but they just look messier but they are a little bit more cost effective to deal with and um, it's got this resin coating underneath the stator which I think is really nice because it acts to protect the stator from jabbing it with the the screws that you might um, jab the stator with if you're mounting it a little aggressively and it also holds the wires on nice and tight so that if you do happen to break an arm and rip a motor wire of some sort it doesn't really rip out of the base of the motor as easily at least and aside from that you're looking at the construction it's all pretty much the same the 2807 weighs about 40 45 46 grams with all this wire and the 2306 version with all the wire as you can see from if we focus from the motor over to the ESC there that's the whole wire that comes in at about 34 grams just over 34 grams and that's about 150 millimeters of wire so it's not too bad I would say that it's it's about a gram maybe a gram gram and a half heavier than a typical 2306 and about two to two and a half grams heavier than a lightweight 2306 that's on the market and this is the 1900 kb version this frame is a frame that i've actually been working on for over a year now the four ride is actually based on this frame this isn't based on the four ride uh, i actually just moved the frame design over to a 20 millimeter build height just because it's just the way it's got to go i just couldn't get electronics created to fit inside a 15 millimeter build height that you're seeing here such that it'll actually be able to drive the drivetrain that i'm working on and i am working on a couple of future drivetrains for five inch and other other sizes uh, but in general let's let's just take a look at this Let's just, let's just see how this works. Also the Fox here T-Rex. So what do we have here? Well, the first thing we have is a very ugly field, which I cannot believe how much money I pay in taxes to use, but that's okay because we're running analog today, so I can't even see how ugly it is anyways. This is my last remaining analog quad, and I built it specifically just to test analog things. And uh, if you put DJI on the same spectrum as analog as all analog cameras the analog cameras are so far down the spectrum that they might as well all be the same quality so while this t-rex camera looks sharper than the than the eagle and it looks arguably better than the baby ratel it's still analog and I would still go with the baby ratel because I just like the the brighter image that it gives me but overall it's a great job thanks Foxier for finally making a large sensor camera a couple years late but good job, you finally did it. It's gonna perform great at night. It does have a huge sensor in there. Honestly, analog is hard to talk about anymore. I know I'm spoiled with DJI, but 
I would strongly recommend it. There are still advantages to analog, but they're few and they're kind of dwindling as DJI improves their software more and more. Moving on to the motors, well, you're already seeing the motors perform totally fine, as I've said previously. Uh, most motors these days are pretty much carbon copies of one another. The lowest to the highest construction quality motor is going to be very, very similar in performance. Would I buy these motors if I was spending my own money and building my own quads? Well, probably not because the, diff the cost difference between a super budget set of motors versus an expensive set of motors is what, like 40 maybe 50 bucks per set of motors if you take out like the crazy $38 motors and that's just not enough money for me to care so much of course if you're new or you're trying to save money or you're building a dozen racing quads yeah I would never spend that kind of money on those set those types of quads because I'm either gonna crash them or smash them and break them or I'm gonna crash them and smash them and break them so there's no point in wasting money for something that's not really gonna perform any differently than these low budget motors. And the reason why these motors are so cost effective is because number one, the margins are almost zero. Emacs is really just making these motors to stay relevant. They wanna stay relevant inside the market so that when they come out with new products, you, you look to them because, oh, they made that good motor, so let's, let's look at other products they make too. And number two, they've just made so many motors in these sizes that they've just become very cost effective to make. Do I think this motor is going to change the purchasing habits of people with motors? No, I don't, because I personally would buy whatever motor I want because I'll just buy whatever motor I want. I'm not necessarily going to buy a motor that's cheap because it's, it's, I mean, I might not buy it because it's cheap, but it's because it might not be what I want. And in my opinion, I don't even think 2306 and 2207 are going to last too much longer on five inch. So this, we're seeing like, the tail end of 2306 and 2207 and uh, I do think that there are other sizes that are going to be coming out that just make a lot more sense. I took some polls in my group as well as a couple other groups and to my absolute shock 4S exclusive quads are being built at a rate of 3 to 1. There are 3 4S quads being built for every 1 6S quad based on my my uh, sample size of at least a couple hundred people minimum if not more than a couple hundred people which is so surprising to me because you're watching this quad fly on 4s it's a 6s quad it's not that much slower on 4s yes it is slower and no it's not as fast as a 2600 kv motor on 4s and there are still some very minor advantages to 4s however now we're running such high kv on 6s that the amps are moving up as well so the flight control and performance is all very very similar and you get actually a little bit better throttle control with 6s on high kv and you get more speed and power at the top end so and you get better voltage stability out of the batteries and you can run crappier batteries and they still perform great and now the batteries don't cost more there you can get 6s batteries for the in the same size for a very similar price as you can find 4s batteries or it might be like a dollar or two more expensive so I don't think anybody should be building any 5-inch quads that are full-blown 5-inch, not like super lights or any of that other stuff. I mean, regular standard GoPro carrying or racing quads to anything less than 6S just because it makes more sense. Now, I am a huge proponent of you really don't need 6S on everything, but in this particular case, there's, a, there, there's no disadvantage to 6S anymore. And if you still have only 4S batteries, just run 4s batteries on 1900 kv flies fine you're gonna you're gonna want lower power in smaller spaces anyways you really only want that super high speed in giant open spaces like i'm flying here which you're gonna cook your battery in in just about three minutes or less than three minutes anyways no matter what you're flying so yeah stop building 4s is my best recommendation only build 6s fly 4s if you want and thanks for watching floss your teeth it's very important Take care. Bye.